Sure, that's one way of looking at it, but it's totally wrong. Listen, they both need each other. It's called interdependency, and they both know it. Yeah, I know. He does terrible things to Tom. Nasty, even sadistic things. But that's fine, as long as that's what Tom wants. Think of it. His actions. He's always asking for it. It's his partner's job to fulfill that need, and Jerry knows that. Proof? Well, in the Tom and Jerry show, they live with each other. Hello? Hello? Jack, I can't believe the Bureau still can't get me a satellite phone. Puppies are making me go to another town in the boondocks again. Well, I'll be a happy camper, even if it ends up being a waste of time. At the very least, it'll get me out of the cramped city for a while. Right, Zack? The perpetrator from the last case really was something. Who'd have thought there'd be razors laced into your nails? Crazy. Just crazy. At least I now have a scar to show off. You see this? I got this when I arrested the Catwoman wannabe. Women. They're crazy. Don't you agree, Zach?
Zack, there goes the civilized world. Welcomed. Zack, I'll let you handle the meet and greet.
situations, but that one, that one takes the cake. It's the first time I've been attacked so directly. Zack, can you give me a logical explanation about what that was? Never mind, don't answer. Life is fun because of the mysteries. Right, Zack?
There's definitely something in this town. Do you feel it, Zack? My coffee warned me about it. Yesterday morning, the milk I poured in my coffee made a sign. It said, Tomorrow you'll arrive in a place that will change your fate. Now you were very late. I didn't think you'd keep me waiting in the rain for so long. FBI Special Agent, Francis York Morgan. Please, just call me York. That's what everyone calls me. Agent York? Good, that's good. Are you the sheriff? Uh, no, I'm Deputy Sheriff Emily Wyatt. George, he's the sheriff. He went looking for you, actually. He should be back soon. I see. If you don't mind me asking, did you walk all the way here? My car broke down, that's all. She's easy on the eyes. Definitely worth a trip to the primitive world. By the way, don't mention anything about what happened back there. She'll think you're a psycho. Don't want that, do we, Zach? Welcome to Greenvale. I'm the sheriff, George Woodman. Call me George. FBI Special Agent Francis York Morgan. Please, just call me York. That's what everyone calls me. Could you tell me why the FBI is so interested in a small-town homicide? Let's just say it's a personal interest in killers of young women. I'm always looking for new sample cases to help me with my profiling. Both our superiors have cleared this with each other. You can remain in command. You don't have a problem with this, do you? No. No problem. Just want to set things straight. Our small town has its share of problems. I'm the one fixing them one by one and maintaining peace and order. You can have your profiling sample, but I need you to understand that. <clears throat> of course. Of course. By the way, George, I had a little accident with my car. Could you send someone to take care of it? Oh, and my clothes and luggage are still inside. All right, don't worry. I'll get my assistant Thomas to take care of it. Do you need anything else? Thanks, that'll be all. Well then, I think I'll rest up first at the hotel. Then I'll join you on your investigation. Don't know how to say that. Uh, we really don't need your help. Unlike some of your corrupt city police officers, I play it by the book. I hope you'll come to appreciate that, Agent Morgan. And we'll handle the investigation. You just think of this as a vacation. Take it easy. Enjoy the nature here. You don't have to be a tree worshiper to appreciate the wildlife here. Zack, let's reassess the situation. There are no cavemen here. We're as far forward as the Middle Ages. And we've just 
met the king. Who are you? Zack, the symbolism in my dreams continues to intensify. 
a forest of red trees, a carpet with red leaves, a strange doll, and twin angels. But that child is what bothers me the most. I swear I've seen him before. I just can't remember where. Well, it'll probably come back to me eventually. For now, we need coffee. Let's head to the cafeteria, Zach. I hope they have some real coffee. I really need some coffee. Then we can head to the sheriff's office. There's a proper procedure for everything, right, Zach? Mr. Morgan, your breakfast is ready for you. Thank you, Mrs. Polly Oxford. Just Polly is fine. Well then, thank you, Polly. I'm starving. Is everything all right, Mr. Morgan? Yes, it's delicious, Polly. My compliments to the chef. I'm hoping my cooking will bring back repeat guests. Honestly, though, it's been a while since anyone has stayed here. I couldn't help but notice. Aside from you and me, there seems to be no other guests or workers around. What's that? The salt's in that white shaker there. Thank you. I was wondering if there were any other guests or workers here. Oh, no, no one else. My husband and I used to run this place, but he's in heaven now. You've been working here alone since then. Must be hard by yourself. Oh my, we're all out of pepper. I'm very sorry. It must be difficult to run a hotel by yourself. Well, yes, I suppose. I could just live on my pension. But I have to admit, running a hotel is kind of like a hobby of mine. That's nice. Polly, it might help to hear you better if you could sit a little closer. Oh my, Mr. Morgan, you're embarrassing me. So early in the day, too. I think I'm a little too old for you. And I still love my departed husband. May God rest his soul. I appreciate the invitation, but I'm fine over here. Polly. I can hardly hear you from all the way over there. You're exaggerating. This is fine. It won't do to be all clumped together with such a large table and cafeteria. We have to make use of all this space. <sighs> now tell me, that wound on your face, what happened? Let's just say I had some trouble during the last case I was working on. I'm sure it'll heal. It's just a flesh wound. Oh my, well, there's no need to be the tough guy here. I want you to be able to relax here. I've prepared a special room for you. A famous rock star once stayed in the same room, you know. Really? I feel honored. If you need anything, anything at all, just let me know. I'll help you out in any Zack, the lady is offering to help. Do you want to ask her about the town? Say, Polly, what can you tell me about this town? Well, let me see. You might know this already, but the town is called Greenvale. It rains here quite often, but it's a nice place, surrounded with nature. It was a big and prospering lumber town until the cross of the world. 
with less than a tenth of them left now. This hotel was built back then. We saw plenty of guests in those days. That's why this place is so big for such a small community. I have so many fond memories from back then. I suppose the clock on the community center is quite famous too. The clock? Oh yes, it's lovely. It rings in the morning and at night to let the whole town know the time. You'll hear it many times during your stay. It's a beautiful sound. And you'll love it too, I think. I look forward to hearing it then. Anything else you'd like to know about? Yes, actually, Polly. Could you tell me about the shops around here? Shops? Well, there aren't many. It is a small town, after all. You can do most of your shopping at the Milk Barn convenience store. The couple who run it are a unique pair. I'm sure you'll get to like them. The A&G Diner is a great place to eat. They might be open even if my kitchen is closed. If you want to go to a bar, there are two. The Galaxy of Terror and the Sweary 65. I don't care much for either of them. Bars are for the younger folk. We also have a gas stand, of course, the art gallery, and even a gunsmith. You should be able to find what you need. Thank you, Polly. Well, Mr. Morgan, I better start cleaning up. You just take it easy. I'll bring your coffee out in a moment. Thank you, Polly. I have to warn you, though, I am very particular about my coffee. The very best you have, please. I understand. I'll be right back with it. Did you see that, Zack? Clear as a crisp spring morning. F. K. In the coffee. I knew I could count on it. Never fails. Now then, let's get going. Police car. So we have King George to thank for preparing a car for me. A pleasant surprise, eh, Zach? Let's take it for a spin. I have to tell you, Zach, this place simply amazes me. The keys were left on the front hood, and nobody stole the car. Values. This town has what the country needs. Values. Let's head over to the sheriff's department.
themselves. How about those bonus features in DVDs nowadays? You know, the ones from the 80s have almost no bonus material. Even if they do, it's a trailer and the visual quality is pretty bad. Well, that visual quality is a good reminder of those days. So many new audio and visual appliances were coming out back then. Do you remember the first video that we bought? We bought it to record one of the Star Wars movies on TV. And remember when that video store opened, we spent hours there just trying to find a good movie to rent. There weren't that many to choose from back then. I remember renting some real bad ones after reading those back cover taglines. Hey, remember? Attack of the Killer Tomatoes, filmed in 1978. Produced, directed, written, and edited by John DeBello. It was really awful, but for some reason I still remember it pretty well. It had so many sequels, and the original was re-released in 95. The 87-minute long theatrical release bumped up to a whopping 90 minutes. But that was around the time I joined the Bureau. I never have a chance to see it. I know, so once this case is over, we can watch it together. I bet we can buy a copy on the internet pretty easily. Zach, is there something here that you want to check out? We're supposed to go through Anna Graham's file at the sheriff's office, but if you want to act on a hunch, then I'm with you. Pleasure to meet you, Agent Morgan. We've been expecting you. I'm Thomas McLean, the Sheriff's Assistant. FBI Special Agent Francis York Morgan. Please just call me York. It's what everyone else calls me. Very well then, Agent, Agent York. I believe I owe you a thank you for retrieving my belongings from my car. Thanks. Oh, no, no, just doing my job. I just... I want to help do everything I can to help the investigation. I just can't believe Anna was murdered. She was such a bright and lovely girl. Did you know her well? Well, no, not really. But it's a very small town. I'm sorry. It's just that this is the first really big case I've ever seen. I understand. Just try to relax. Can I have a look at Anna's file now? Y yes, of course. The sheriff told me to let you through to the meeting room, but I've lost the key to the cabinet where the files are. Why don't you take a look around while I go look for it? Okay, let me know when things are ready. Zach, Thomas appears to be the kind and sensitive type, totally at odds with the monarch. Almost a good setting for a cartoon.
you found the key. I hope so. Uh, no, this is a sugar glider. Sorry, wrong key. The sugar glider is a small gliding possum. It has shorter hair and a longer column-like tail. You can really see its muscle definition on this image, can't you? But we're looking for a southern flying squirrel right now. Zach, can you tell these things apart? You found the key. I hope this is the right one. Uh, you found a Siberian chipmunk this time, have you? Sorry, wrong key. A Siberian chipmunk? This species lives in northern Japan on the island of Hokkaido. They're actually quite a popular pet. So it isn't even a squirrel. But we're looking for a southern flying squirrel right now. You found the key. That's the right one? Yes, a southern flying squirrel. Thank you so much. I'll bring the files right in, so please go to the meeting room. Okay, I'll be waiting for you. Well, Zach, we just got here and we've cracked a big case already. The victim's name was Anna Graham. Age 18, she just recently graduated from high school this year. Her dream was to move out to the city and become a model. But for the time being, she was working in the a and diner here in town. She lived with her mother, Sally. Anna's father died in an accident in a lumber mill when she was a child. Her mother is unemployed and lives on the insurance money from her husband's accident. After all, it's a small town with a low cost of living. Financially, they seem to get by fine, and they led normal lives. A normal life is exactly what a curious teenager doesn't want. It's all starting to make sense, Zach. City folk, huh? No. No, I take that back. All of them can't be as bad as him. And some should have better manners. Huh. This is a good biscuit. I've never tasted a biscuit this delicious. 
Where in town can I get these? Well, actually, I, well, I, I baked them myself. Hmm, that's amazing. What are you doing in law enforcement? I'm very particular about biscuits, I'll have you know. The balance of milk and butter you've achieved here. Oh, my. Agent Morgan, the autopsy's ready. You are welcome to accompany me to the Greenvale General Hospital. Emily, you come too. Thomas, stay here and tidy up these files. Y yes sir! We're going to use the car outside. Let's get going. You might think this is just a small town police investigation, but our inspections are thorough and solid. I'm hoping you won't slow us down. <laughs>